thank you for the opportunity to show you a quick overview of Pintaho Data Integration, which I will refer to as PDI. In this brief video, I'll focus on just a few of the key concepts you need to know to build data pipelines. We start with a welcome landing page for PDI, which shows you information on where to create a new transformation or job, where to go to learn about Pintaho through documentations, notes, tutorials, and even where to go and extend Pintaho through our community marketplace and by building new plugins. What we're going to do is we're going to open up a new transformation and begin there. So as we begin, you'll see here that we have a blank canvas on the right and a palette of pre-built steps to choose from on the left. So in a graphical code-free development environment, you can select any of these steps from the palette and begin to build a data pipeline, which we call a transformation. You can select any steps, including data, files, databases, web services, and transform these into data streams of any fashion, including pivoting, sorting, filtering, and grouping, and write those to any data target, such as a database, file, web service, and data stream. With over 300 different steps to choose from, you'll be able to graphically build any transformation that you need today or in the future. So we'll start with dragging on the CSV file input onto the screen. Now you can either double click the CSV file input on the left or drag and drop and place it onto the screen wherever you like. First I'll start by double clicking the CSV file input step and it opens up the landing page. Now I'm going to browse to where my CSV file is now, Pentaho does come with some sample transformations and sample files, and it's under the home location, design tools, data integration, samples, transformations, and file folder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick sales data. So I double click sales data. What I need to do is ask Pentaho to get all the fields. So if I click get all the fields, it's going to ask me to sample the data. Now, I'm not 100% sure how much data is in this folder, so I'm going to actually just type in zero and click OK, and it'll read all of the data. In this case, there's about 3,000 different lines, and I can see the names of the fields, the types, the formats, the lengths, and so forth. Another advantage is the ability to immediately preview your data at any step in the transformation by clicking on this little inspect data icon at the top. Now, because of our rich heritage in both business analytics, as well as in building data pipelines, you can begin analyzing your data now rather than waiting or dumping data into another tool. This avoids delays in verifying your data transformations and shortens time to delivery. So in addition to looking at our data as a table, let's build an analytical column chart to aggregate our data across sales from country. So we click on table, click on column chart, and in this case I'll click sales, and if I scroll down I'll click on country. So looking at our data in this matter not only shows us our sales by country, but it also shows that we have issues with our country names and how they're spelled. So for example, we have USA spelled here, but we also have United States fully spelled out. So this is something that we'll need to correct as part of the transformation. Now in order to fix this issue, we need to jump back into the transformation, go over to the palette of steps, and open up the transform set of steps. And what we'll use is the value mapper step. Now you can put this onto the screen one of two ways, either double clicking, and it'll automatically create a hop, or by manually dragging and dropping it onto the palette and connecting them together by clicking on shift and dragging it over. In this case, I'll have it as the main output of step. Now the hops are the flow of data. So in this case, from CSV file input to the value mapper step. And if we open up the value mapper step, in this case, what we're going to use this is to change the United States to USA. So the field to use will be country. And our source value will be United States. And the target value will be USA. So now let's have a look and see if everything has been set from country and renamed into USA. So as I click the inspect data button at the top, we'll reinspect the data. But instead of looking at a table or a column chart like we did before, let's build out a visualization like a sunburst. So if we open up sunburst, we come back to the same palette to build out the sunburst itself. And in my case, if I click on sales and 
country again, we'll see that the United States field is gone and everything has been renamed to USA. So just to complete the simple transformation, let's write the data to an output step. So if we click back to the palette and go into the output steps, as you can see here, we can really write to any data source. For this example, though, I'm going to use the table output step. And again, I'm just going to double click in this case. You see the table output step. So I double click on the table output step and I can see all the different connection information that I'm allowed to create. If I click on new connection, it'll open up the database connection table and I can see all the different types of databases that I can connect to from Oracle to Microsoft SQL Server all the way out to Snowflake if need be. Now instead of typing my credentials into this database connection, I'm just going to open up a transformation with a database connection already created to save some time. So if we open our transformations and we just jump back a folder in the transformations folder, we can see dozens of sample transformations that are available for us to use and to look at. And the one I'm going to do is the one that's called getting started. If I double click the getting started transformation, as you'll see, this looks very familiar to the one we were just looking at, but just a few extra steps. So this sample getting started transformation can be built in about 20 minutes and it has a few extra steps from the one we started with. Uh, for example, it has the filter row step, which allows you to look up things like the missing postal code or zip code and then send the data the direction you want. In this case, down to a lookup missing zip code step, which is a stream lookup step, which allows you to then to look and compare city and state, in this case, find the new zip code that was missing. So in this case, the lookup missing zip step is actually just pulling from a text file, but it could just as easily be pulling from an API or a number of different data connections. So once we've looked up those missing zip codes, we can use a select value step to select and alter the fields to rearrange their order, or even change the uh, metadata of, let's say, for example, zip underscore resolve to rename it as postal code. Once that's been renamed and rearranged, we drop that back into the stream of data. We put it back into the value mapper step as before from United States to USA, and then continue on into a number range step. Now this number range step allows you to stratify or band the data into small, medium, or large deal sizes by taking the input field as the sales field and creating a brand new field we call deal size. So whether that's below 3,000, between 3,000 and 7,000, or above 7,000, this gives you a new field in our data set that can be used for more reporting and analytics throughout the transformation. Now this transformation already has a connection already created for you out to a sample H2 database and a table built out called sales data. Now Pentaho does have the capability to actually build out the table for you on the fly if that table doesn't exist for your connection. Now I've already gone ahead and deleted this sales data table. So what I need to do is push the SQL button at the bottom and it will automatically open up the simple SQL editor and create the script for you to build that table. So when I push execute, it actually builds the table for me on the fly, and now it's available for me to write my data to the table. So now we're ready to run this. And as we click Execute, the data streams through the transformation and records are being processed in parallel by all of the steps all of the time. So this greatly improves throughput and increases performance as well. You can also enable multi-threading to improve performance around any bottleneck in any of the steps by right-clicking and just clicking on change number of copies of steps. So in this case, from one to three. So now when I click on run, the run options open up and I have a few different configurations I can run my transformation on, whether that be locally on my laptop, on the Pitaho server, or even running this on Spark with our adaptive execution later. I'm just going to run it locally on my computer and click run. Green check marks means everything is successful. So now we've done a lot of data profiling, data wrangling here. So let's look at one more analytical report to see if our results are as close to what we expected. So if I click on write to database and inspect data, we can see here that United States is only existing as USA and that we've now bucketed the sales by deal size and that the USA has the largest number of medium deal sizes 
followed by Spain, and then followed by France. So there's just one more PDI concept that I'd like to cover with you. So you've briefly seen how transformations provide data flow from any input, process the data, and transform it and output it to a specific target. Well, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about jobs. So jobs provide control flow so that you can really do anything from uh, file transfers or FTP files, run various transformations, run sub jobs, or even alert via email if some sort of condition occurs. So for example, let's create a job that starts, opens up a transformation, and then has a successful outcome. We can also tell the job to send an email for when the transformation is not successful. And if you want, we can schedule it under any schedule interval which you prefer. So today we really just scratched the surface of what PDI can actually accomplish in terms of how we can help you build robust data pipelines. So I wanted to thank you for your time and to learn more or schedule a meeting with one of our experts, please visit hitachiventara.com forward slash go forward slash pentaho.html.